Hey guys, welcome back to Undefined Therapy and today we're going to be talking about procrastination. I talked about procrastination being something that I actually struggle with in my video where I talked about the five worst habits for mental health. I'll link that in the video and also down in the description box below. But someone, a lovely subscriber of mine was like, how do I stop it? In my mind, I was like, mm. I'm still a work in progress and I am still trying to figure that out. But I will tell you some of the things that I recommend to others and some of the things that I'm also doing for myself in hopes that you will be able to kick procrastination in the booty. But before I go on into talking about procrastination and how we can debt it, I definitely wanna ask you to subscribe here on Undefined Therapy where I post mental health videos two to three times a week. And if you're always a subscriber, then I definitely want to say thank you so much. I truly appreciate the support. Now let's jump on in and talk about procrastination and the steps to stop it. So for myself, I always like to know what something is before I actually try to work to stop it. I'm all about naming something. I think that gives you a little bit more power if you know kind of what you're dealing with. So the definition of procrastination is the act of postponing or delaying something that you have to do. That's ringing any bells. Sound a whole lot like procrastination to me. But I wanted to give you guys the definition if somebody just wanted to know it. So now let's have this little chit chat about procrastination. Procrastination impacts so many people all the way from like little things to folding laundry all the way to probably preparing for conferences or presentations. It can impact you on the littlest to the highest and we all struggle with it. Now, I know I'm not alone. But we all tell ourselves, well, I mean, we real good at rationalizing why we shouldn't do something that we know we should be doing. Like, I'm too busy. I'm too tired. I'll get to it tomorrow. Oh, that could wait. That could wait. I don't know how I'm going to do it, so I'm going to ask somebody. But then you'll never ask nobody. And then you postpone it because you waiting for that person to get back to you, but you forgot to really get to them. <gasps> we can definitely rationalize so many different ways on how we can just not get to that task. And then sometimes at the root of that is fear that we're not going to do it right or that we're going to get a bad grade or that it's going to be too difficult. And we don't even realize until the day of that we don't let this build up so much now. We don't procrastinate it so much. Let those thoughts get into our heads so much that the day comes when we ain't got no choice. And that fear, that anxiety, that stress is through the roof. But as I said, I know I'm not alone. Let me know down in the comments below what you actually struggle with procrastinating the most. I think for myself, mm, that's really hard to choose. Probably like laundry. I'm a work in progress and I'm going to implement some of these steps as well to get better at that procrastination. So let's talk about these steps right now. Number one is write down your goal in a deadline. I myself have been so proud of myself because I have been doing this on Sundays. I've wrote down little goals for each day. That way, if I need to carry it over to another day because I didn't get it done, it's like out of my mind and I know that I need to get it done and I have a target date. So write it down and set a deadline. Number two is break that goal now into small pieces. So if your goal is to get your whole house cleaned, if I think about that, Mm, y'all think I'm really trying to do that? That task sounds so overwhelming. I just don't know where to start. I'd be like, oh, oh, you got to break it down. So Mondays, I sweep and mop. Tuesdays, I clean out the cabinets. Wednesdays, I vacuum. Of course, dishes are always being done. But, you know, maybe Thursdays, I'm cleaning out things, wiping things down, decluttering. Saturdays, I'm not doing nothing because it's Saturday. And then Sunday, I just started all over again. Number three is to find things that motivate you. So for me, I know that I feel good when I'm in a clean space. A clean space is a reflection sometimes of how you feel and how you see yourself. So I definitely like to be in a clean space and I know that motivates me. So even if that task sounds very daunting, I can tell myself, yeah, I go talking to myself again. Remember how you feel, visualize how you feel like, very refreshed, a lot lighter, and you just feel good overall when your house is clean. So visualize how you want to feel. Imagine just feeling in that good space so that it motivates you to complete that task. Number four is to take control of the fear. 
as I talked about earlier, sometimes fear is one of the motivators or one of the reasons why you don't do the task right away or why you rationalize ways hoping that it will actually go away. But we know that it doesn't go away. It just gets worse and worse as you get closer to the deadline. So use the fear. Allow it to, again, motivate you. As I talked about, you know, some people are motivated by fear and some people are not. But harness that fear and say, you know what, like, I'm not going to be afraid to succeed. Talk about positive affirmations. Write down how you'll feel if you do not do this task. So, of course, like laundry may seem like a very small task. So you're like, well, what do I fear about that? I don't know. I'm not you. But I know that when I don't have a clean house, I'm like, man, my mom going to talk about me like, let me just get this done. I'm not going to be afraid of what she's going to say. I'm just going to get it done so I don't have to hear about it. And instantly I have changed that fear of what she's going to say into a motivator as for me to just get it done and to just accomplish it. So the fear is not overpowering me for me just to be like, well, what's the point? She's going to talk her talk anyways. I just use it as a way to be proactive and just use it to just move forward. Number five is build a team. You know, they say it takes a village. And you know, for me, for me, when I got these big tasks and goals that I want, it definitely will take a team. My friends are ride or die for me. They'll call me out. They'll challenge me. They'll motivate me. They'll encourage me, all of those things. So definitely build yourself a team. If you know that you have this big thing that you really want to do and you know that procrastination is your biggest downfall, make sure they're reminding you. Let them know your downfalls. Email them, text message them. Let them know what are your goals and the places that you need to hit. So when we did number two and we broke them down into pieces, share that with people so that on that day or coming up, they like, all right, you're supposed to have your outline now. You need to show it. You need to tell me. So for me, like in this very moment, I had a friend actually text me yesterday, like, okay, you have your speaking gig October 11th, you know, Where's that outline? Where's that PowerPoint? You know, I love you, friend, and I'm glad you're there, but whoa, did you just blow my whole spot? So I'm actually going to be definitely getting that done so that they can enjoy my success, but also make sure that I'm not allowing fear to stop me from doing things. So build yourself a team, have yourself a tribe so that you can be accountable and get the things done that you want to. Number six is to reward yourself. I don't think we do this enough. I think we're very quick to have and know the consequences like I'm a fail or you know I'm not going to be asked to come back and speak again if I don't do this we know those consequences like off the bat but we often don't reward ourselves when we actually do it so after I do this outline I am going to go to the movies I'm going to hang out I'm going to do a fun activity to celebrate me getting it done then that also instills motivation. It also instills positive energy. And you kind of remember that you're like, wait a minute, like I'm not all exhausted mentally and emotionally because I waited to the last minute. I actually feel good. And I got all this energy and I want to do these amazing things because I didn't let procrastination take over. I got it done early and now I have time to celebrate. So remember to reward yourself. And lastly, number seven, start now. Even if you don't have something, a big task or a big goal, and you're like, okay, when that comes up, I'm not going to procrastinate. Start with the small things. Fold your laundry. Get that put away. Hang up your clothes. Organize your shoes. Clean out your cupboards. Like Wipe out things. Clean out your car. The things that you've been putting off, even if they're really small, start today. Like right now, start today because it takes some time to build momentum. It takes, I don't know, like 30 days or 60 days for you to learn a new habit. So don't, again, you procrastinate on stopping to procrastinate. We're not going to do that. Instead of waiting until something comes up for you to show that I'm going to implement these steps, implement them with the small things so that when the big things come, it's already a habit. You already feel good about it. You already know these steps work and you've already critiqued them because again, these steps might not work for everybody. You might say, I'm going to do one and three, and that's how I was able to crush it. That's wonderful, but you won't know what works for you until you do it. So number seven is start now. There you have it. That was seven ways that you can stop procrastinating today. I hope this was fruitful for you. I hope that 
one, all seven, any of them apply to you and helps you overcome this fear or helps you overcome what you're rationalizing away so that you can be successful, so that you can feel good about yourself and so you can start accomplishing things. If you like this video and you like the information that I put out, don't forget to subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love for you to come back and see all of the content. Definitely leave comments down below on what steps have helped you with overcoming your procrastination or as I said earlier, what is your biggest thing that you procrastinate about? Let's build a tribe here down in the comments here on Undefined Therapy. I want to support you. I'm sure that other people want to support you so that you can get started today. So yes, that's all I have for you today and I will see you in the next video.